Yeah. All right. Uh, thanks, Olivia. Let me get set up here. Okay. So, <clears throat> welcome to Chapter Eight: Missions. Um, the learning objectives of this chapter are see what conditions are and how to use them. Um, so let's get started on the, the introduction. So conditions are what uh, problems that arise from functions and there are three types of conditions. Um, hold on, I think I got the wrong. Yeah. There are three types of conditions. Um, Sorry, I. I'm just trying to get the HTML file from from my branch instead of the main branch. There we go. Sorry about that. All right, so there are three types of conditions: um, errors, warnings, messages, and interrupt. So errors, they're the most severe, and they indicate that there is a problem and the function cannot continue. And the second type of condition is a warnings. Warnings are less severe and indicate that a problem arose, but the function can still continue. And messages, they're the mildest condition, and they indicate that something happened that the user should know. And there's this other um, condition called interrupt. And this is when the user intervenes and stops the execution of the function by pressing the escape or these, um, these, uh, uh, these keyboard uh, uh, pads, depending on your password. So, so there are errors. four types of conditions. Yeah, yeah. Um, the book is the book makes it sound like there are one three. One of them is dynamic, and the others as like I mean, uh, one of them is user defined. I mean, I don't know if it's user defined, but it's user dependent. The last, the interrupt one. Yeah, the final condition interrupt. <clears throat> so there's uh, the three main conditions that you can signal inside your functions, error warning message, and then interrupt is the final condition. Um, so errors, you can throw errors with the stop functions in base R. Um, and then in R lang, can throw it with the abort function. So let's let's see what this looks like inside of R. Uh, can you all see my R C D? Right, thanks. So Bob will. So an error message that looks like this. And then our leg abort will throw another error message with pretty syntax. Um, cool. So how this works is the base R function is stop. It pays together these arguments. So if you you want to provide like custom arguments to your stop message, then you can do something like some value, and then run the stop function. But your your value will show up in the message. So let's quickly paste them together this portion and this portion in the error message. And then 
um, Arlang abort. It uses uh, the group package to page together uh, messages. So this is doing the same thing. Your value is one. Uh, So the tidyverse style guide, it has more principles that you can look at to pass the custom error message. Uh, let's move to chat. Yeah, I was just gonna tap into the chat that also like the step function, uh, it taken a uh, dot, dot, dot argument. So that's why, like, you can uh, as arguments, yeah. If you check, yeah. Oh, this argument here, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it's internal, by the way. If you if you print the function, I didn't do it. So it's just it's just uh, yeah, an internal function. I mean, part of it is internal. Yeah. <clears throat> I like these like not internal. Okay. Yeah. Um, and learning, they think that something has gone wrong, but the code is still able to recover and continue. So let's try running this function here. Uh, worm, inside worm is this print statement, and then the warning. This is the first warning. Uh, the print number two, then second warning, print three, and third warning. Let's see what this looks like. So basically, what this is doing is going through all the non-warning functions, so like the, all the fake statements first. So it's printing one, two, three. And then it's printing all the warning messages once once the print statements are complete. So it goes through the warning messages. It's your first warning, second warning. Here. Um, but if you don't like this default behavior, you can also change the default behavior with the options function. The option of warning plus one helps you make up to uh, warnings appear immediately. Warning plus two turns warning into error, and zero turns or uh, sorry, stores the restores the default behavior of one. Um, and then the author gives advice on what he needs to He uh, advises to throw an error rather than warn. But in some cases, warnings do make sense. Um, when the function is being deprecated, you want to warn to the user that it is reaching the end of life. Uh, Okay. Maybe it's a good time to ask, like, uh, what do you? Other, yeah. I mean, what what was the thought on um, on warning? Like, I I do not have like before reading the book. I was like, um, warning is more like a message, but and I yeah. feel like more that way. Uh, I don't know, like. Uh, if we have built a package, or if you build package, or if you use package uh, that is warning, what are your, how you how are you treating them, and what do you think about that? How do you consider like as, as if you adding designs? Question about around warning, like if you build a function, do you want to warn user outside of the the example, like for example at like guild, or do you have example, or what's your thought about warning? Because I think it's open. Yeah. Um, I think the author gives an example of warning. Um, 
which is like inside GG Pod when you when you pop Instagram and you don't supply the the number of inputs as an argument to your Instagram genome. And it throws a warning up there showing that it's that's a inlet to like thirty, I think, by default. I, I think I think they're useful like when when the user doesn't supply an argument to a function and the function just goes on with its own default, but it also wants to tell the user uh, what the default is. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I agree. I think like the the question of deprecated function and uh, or deprecated argument is a good example of a warning. Uh, I do not know if I have another example. I I never implemented warning, for example. I think I implemented a bunch of error <laughs> and a bunch yeah. of message, but never too much warning. So I I'm curious if also like I've thought like oh outside of the example like give of uh, like give like what was a good example of warning should it be? I think the uh, another one that I see frequently is the one from uh, Barplot. Um, no, not Barplot. Instagram. When it's warm, you are on the bins that's oh. used. Um... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah I, I, I was I was also trying to, to remember like a common warning. I, I found a list uh, on the internet. And like I, now I remember when you're doing like vector uh vector zooms or 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 any operation it warns you if if you're using vectors of different uh, size it will warn you if one vector is not a multiple if the oh yeah yeah one is not a yeah. multiple of, of, right. the, of the small one yeah. that's a yeah that's a that's a very that's good cool. example like uh big I, I think uh i on that i want to be it an error i don't do that <laughs> I, I don't yeah. want to be recycling my vectors uh, of a non, um, yeah. Yeah, yes. I think this is a good example of a warning that I would want an error. I don't know. <laughs> and you can change that on your option, but yeah. Right. Well, that's not. Oh, there you go. Warning. Well, yeah, the, the, the DNA is introduced by coercion. That one is also kind of common. Uh, but yeah, I think. Oh, this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember seeing this one too. Uh, uh, yeah. It's it's a good question. Like, do you want that to be an error or do you want that to be a message? And I kind of think uh, on this one, I want more message. I'm fine with any, depending of what the coercion is. I don't know. That's that's good. That's a good one too. Good point. And I think I think there are some that um, coming out of statistics packages or statistical functions, right? Like if you're violating assumptions or there's something strange, kind of a peripheral uh, part of the analysis that's maybe not exactly perfect. That to me seems like a good place for for warnings, which is like I'm going to go ahead and let this run, but just so you know that you know there's something not right. That yeah. you need to you need to go back and check. That that's a that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Is this is this a good example of a statistical function throwing a warning? Um this is the correlation function, I believe. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. so <laughs> that sounds funny. Yeah. So it throws <laughs> a warning message. Yeah. Yeah, yeah good uh, example. I mean Hopefully never, uh, we're gonna never have that, but yeah. Yeah. Can I, can I ask a question back on the, the stop, sure. the, the error side of things, which I, I just missed the opportunity, which is, yeah. um, I, and, I, I, and this might be just me because I've only been able to go to like every other one of these sessions, but in the, at the, toward the end of the errors, and I don't think it showed up here in the, in the summary, but in the actual chapter, yeah. it talked about, or maybe it did in as an example, it talked about a call and when you should, Right. Um, set the uh, yeah exactly right there the the error message includes the call and I I'm, I feel yeah. silly but I don't know what the call is what is a call 
uh, and and what is and and when is it true? Like when do you see versus not see, and what was what's the benefit or cost there? Yeah. Give you a quick answer, but it gives the answer like, well, it's good. Like if you go uh, on it, uh, a world, but I think this is like more design choice and question choice, and we can give you like an answer. What's the call is? Uh, it's basically uh, uh, the call. I mean, the call argument here is telling you what function call uh, from what function the error was thrown. Yeah, and, and if you set up the false, it will just uh, display. I think the um, the error message which is telling you which function. Ah, uh, okay. So, so in our cases, this is this it's like this. It's so simple that we're only running one function. So, it, you know, you know which function that is causing the error. But when you have functions that are running yeah. other functions, then you can't tell, and so that lets you know which. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks. I appreciate it. I wish that would. No have worries. That. There's no stupid question like that. <laughs> we need like yeah, and here if yeah, thank you. Yes. So like, like TSP one, that's the call argument to true. And so when you run TST1, the error message uh, specifies that the error comes from TST1. But then TST2 says false to false. And so the error message of TST2 doesn't specify uh, and, and sometimes, let's say like you are using an utility function, that's not a function that the user can see. When it say like error in my crappy function that I designed uh, to do something that's only me can see, uh, we'll throw like beginners on why 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 is it like this function that I don't know why it exists. So I think it's a good design choice when you have like a function that the user shouldn't know it exists to not display it in the error call. Yeah, no, that that makes total sense because they haven't called that function. They don't even know what it is. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Howard, would you mind real quick at, at your prompt there? Could you do like a TST3, set that function just to be TST1 and then run it? I'd see what that was. Yeah. Just so, so it is kind of hidden. So I make it a function. TST3 is assigned to the function and then just make the function. Oh, be, I see. The, the body of the function be TST1. Yeah. Just want to see what these kind of embedded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. You have cool. a trace back here. Yeah. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> All right. Well, good question. Yeah. yeah good question. I'll go back to the content. Uh, All right, so let's move on to the messages. Um, messages tell the user that you've done something on their behalf. And so they are issued immediately, and they do not have a call art. Uh, oh, so Olivia, I guess this, this um, message the bin with message. It's not it's not a warning, it's a message. <laughs> I always thought it was a warning. Um but yeah when you um when you don't supply a bin with argument to Geon Instagram and Geon Art thought I believe then Digipod will tell the user what what the default arguments have been used. And also, like when you're like, calling the like, API yeah, or you like writing to the database, then you can use messages to like help you do what's happening. So it's kind of like the status message that you show to the user. And then lastly, like when you when you're in a package folder and you want to display your message and your package is loaded, uh, you you put this function package startup message uh, inside this uh, 
I guess I'm just called thoughts on the past. Okay, no questions. I'll move on to the exercise. I just say there. I know. I know Hadley likes to do that, but I, I can't stand having messages show up every time I load a package. I, I really wish. <laughs> I really wish he wouldn't do that so much. <laughs> exactly. I, I was going to say the same. Sometimes developer like use that on attach way too much. <laughs> Yeah. It's an argument when you are loading the package, you can also suppress warning on the library call. Yeah, I, but I just, yeah, I just like can. my library parentheses tidyverse, and that's all I want to type, and that's all I want to see. <laughs> yeah, you can. I think it's suppressed. Like, can you do a library tidyverse? Yeah, thank you. I think, I think, I think these messages are useful. Dang. You, you, you don't like these messages? And, and can you no, use li library tidy yeah, right. suppress warning? <laughs> suppress message? Library? No, no, no. Yeah, I think in library, you can also uh, ask. There's an argument that can do that also. Suppress? Uh, what was it? Suppress warning? Suppress message? I don't know. I Yeah, good. Uh, it, 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 it is. Quietly. Yeah. Quietly true? Uh, uh, Let's try quietly yeah. equal true. Let's see. Yeah. True. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so is there but, some, can you can you set something an option in your R profile to say Yeah, you can do that. That that's what I would want to do. Oh, you can create my uh, library and that's a function that's called <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait, how how yeah. would you set up options? I'm 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 pretty sure it exists, but yeah, I don't I don't know. We can we can list that for the chat later. Okay, yeah. Uh, all right. Um. Yeah. So let's move on to the exercise. So the first question is to write a wrap around file that remove that throws an error if. The file to be deleted to find this. So, uh, what I did here is what I did here is um, I I use an if statement, and if the file does not exist, then throw the stop. Throw all stops. Uh, with this message, file is not exist. And set call dot equal to false. Don't include the, the function inside the message. Um, and then, but if it does exist, then remove the file. Um, so if I want to demo this, I got to create a file so all right Let's function then the console the file file remove error uh let's try to remove a file that does not exist right then you get an error message that the file does not exist. But let's try to remove this file here. Right. Need a nice uh, true. If it's true. Does that make any sense? Cool. Thank you, Chris. All right. So the second question, um, what is the append ls argument to message? How is it related to the cat function? So um the append ls it append a new line to to your message. And then you can do the same thing in cat with the set argument. 
he sent it to uh, what else is called the new line, the new line thing. Um, so let's see. All right, okay, just new line. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so multi message. It's a function that contains three message functions. And and the first message sets append LF to true. The second message sets this to false. So let's see what this says. You can see that line one print. And then line two prints on a new line says of this set to true. But then Line three is on the same line as line two because this is a default. Then let's, let's see what happens in chat. So it's basically doing the same thing. Um, I guess but different colors. So in chat, we set the step argument to the new line. And so when you print line one, the line two is printed on the new line. What's the difference between cat and print? Yeah, I, I, I was back overflow this question like a million times and I, I don't remember what exactly it is. So but. with print, you have to send a, uh, well, if, if you want to print like, like a alert word, you, or words with, uh, with objects or variables, you have to first call either paste or, or something else, right? And cat will just, will just put them all together. Oh, that's okay. one of the differences. Yes. I think in my mind, the difference that I saw is cat doesn't doesn't like doesn't have this one in the output, whereas the print it has a one. So it's like cat is like cleaner. Print. Yeah, I think print print is about like sort of printing the output to the console, so you can kind of see, see the output variables, whereas yeah. cat is more about messaging. Uh, also, also print have a bunch of method prints. Uh, we're gonna see probably that in the S three chapters. But if you are printing a table, a table, uh, vectors, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, uh, it has different. Like the, for example, the one like you you see on top, like the on the the, the when you print like uh, I don't know like just hello world, it prints um, one into square bracket hello world. And if you print like a table, it will print it in some way. And this is all, um, I mean, the print function is, of, is, um, is is loaded with a bunch of methods that's print differently. If you print like, this is what's ex explained, um, probably like print LM also, if you print LM method, you're gonna print you something like very nice with the summary, et cetera, et cetera. So the print is a generic function that's gonna, if, if, if you, can you just uh, type print on the, yeah. I think it's gonna make on attach something print. Just no, just print. Oh, <laughs> just oh, print. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, it's it's use method print, so it's gonna dispatch a different method of print depending of the class of the object. Yeah. Right. While cat is 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 more like general. Um, uh... Yeah. Cat cat like Linux like. Oh, it's another internal function. Yeah. yeah. But good question. And it's not, not an easy answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll share the link to this SO point or uh, SO after Jeffrey. Uh, okay, let's move on to the next question. Um, yeah, so. Uh, the simplest way to handle permissions is to ignore the errors, but you can ignore errors with 
try. You can ignore warnings with suppress warnings. Ignore messages with suppress messages. So ignore errors with try. So it, I think it, it displays the error, but then continues execution after the error. Yeah, so it displays the error message, but then it continues the execution after it displays the error message. That's just an old try. But then, if you want to catch the error, then you can use try catch. Uh, set a default value inside call. Right. So this is where like like you want to run this default line, but I think I think you're running it with inside this try function. This might not work. So just prepare for the case that it doesn't work. You want to set a default value for default. So this is the same. Um, you cannot open this CSV file. No such file is directory. But then if you see what default is, it's still sets to null. Right. And then suppress so warning is suppress messages. So stop with client or install. I'm oh, sorry, suppress is all suppress warnings, suppress is all warnings, suppress messages, suppress is all messages. So you do suppress warnings. Then you will not see this warning message. And then if you suppress messages, then you won't see any messages. I believe there's another suppress for packages. So like I've going back to what we did before. Right. So suppress this suppresses the package star message. Okay, we are on 8.5, handling conditions. Uh, this, this is a bit tricky, so I'm gonna have to ask for a lot of help here. Uh, but, uh, so every condition has a default behavior. Um, errors, fault execution, warnings are selected during execution, messages are displayed immediately, and there are these two handle functions, try catch and with calling handlers. Okay, let me try running this. I'm just going to refer to the book. So, So they are different in the way that they handle handle handlers. And I believe that handlers are these functions. So this error is a handler, and this warning is a handler, this message is a handler. And so try cache, it's it defines this exiting handler. So what that means is that like I think what's unclear like on me on this example or what make it not not necessarily unclear but hard is like it's super generic like with the function condition so if you write like uh instead of function conical you write like function anonymous function like state like function nothing and stop uh error and the uh, error is 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 um equal to that uh then you're gonna uh, have the um, 
it's not it's gonna go uh, with the code to run while handler are active. So it's like uh, yeah, it's like if you use an, a a real argument and instead of um, the generic um, framework, how it's write it. Yeah, I, I think it's helpful to see. Yeah, see code. this one is a good example. Yeah, and I run code instead of reading the text. But uh, so I think if you run F F three, then as you are alluding to Olivia, instead of like. Displaying the error message from log. Yeah. That displays the error message in your hazard, which is NA. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you can you can specify what error message you can you want to show in in your error and you run a or when you encounter error when you run a function through. Yeah, but the, the function condition is just an anonymous function. You can rename like you can also instead of condition put bill. It will work the same, I think. <laughs> it's just it's just a a convention. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, that's what makes yeah. it hard, I guess. Yeah, I think Hadley mentioned it being like yeah, what he calls yeah, he just calls it yeah, it's a convention CND yeah. by convention. Yeah. Which I think would have helped me like reading this chapter if it was a bit above uh, the text. But yeah, that's small detail. Yeah, uh, I'm the same, uh, Steffi. I always do that too. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I've been using try rather than using try cache. Okay. So let's try to figure this out. <laughs> um, and then I think this this code is saying that like like yeah, so like there's a message and there's a stop. And I believe that the stop never runs because this message signals function to go to this line here. But yeah, so since since we have a message here, we're just printing there, which is like a handler, instead of um, executing the stops. But I think if we have a stop here, You need to run the oh sorry sorry yeah. the function. You this need to be into a function I think no. <laughs> if I understand correctly. Like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, Sorry, okay. it doesn't. Uh, it's been um, let's see. I have the chat on the on the side. Well, yeah. Oh, I'm uh, but, uh, working. Okay. Yeah. So, try catch has a final argument called finally, and this is gonna run no matter what the condition is. So this is usually used for uh, clean up functions. Um, I think here define a path variable to the path to a temporary temporary file in your system. And then you run try catch. I think I think you're writing lines. So you're writing the high your path. 
and then you delete the directory. Oh yeah, no file of directory. So I guess you delete the file by using final yeah. Okay. Does this make any sense? Yes, it makes, but it's it's uh, I think it's it's kind of hard to have like a good understanding. Um uh, this one is like I think it's super handy, like when you write error to not glutter stuff. But yeah. uh, and the previous one were like the control flow of the function giving try catch is definitely not uh easy. Like what's the when when does try catch uh send you back into like the all alternative flow or what it does directly was not super uh intuitive to me. So I will probably need to um to do that slowly. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. To redo all that, but I think the example you give are, are, are very nice, but uh, yeah, you definitely want to, I mean, I will probably redo, we go to the chapters if I need to use them, because yeah. the control flow of what happened when you use try catch and what is executed is not always clear on my mind. I don't know if I'm done on, on that, but, and the final example is a good example, like uh, if you want, I think like the first step show you like you directly exit to the what's called the function. While if you have finally you, even if you exit, it will still run. Right. But that's 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 a control flow that I, I I'm so bad at it and it's super hard to test. Yeah, yeah I think with, <laughs> I think with many of you it's hard to understand and I think you just get the hang of it by using it a lot in your functions. I could see that coming in handy if you are writing like a function that does things and then it errors and you want to kind of undo all the things that you did. Um, I guess it, he did say it was very similar to the on exit, um, but perhaps just right. within that block. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's I, I think it's need, you need like you need experience. You know, like the, the this yeah. is the classic that like, we can like write a bunch of crappy code to understand what it does, uh, and I will probably fail a bunch of time, and I will probably need to write it a bunch of small snippet like it does, uh, yeah. where I try to isolate my problem and test it correctly, because the control flow, I I, I agree, is super hard. Like uh, what's all, yeah. I think one thing that's also kind of um, that they mentioned that I think it's probably worth bearing in mind is that with the try catch it's I think, um, actually I'm not sure anymore um, but I feel like they said part of that or was it only within the the expression so if there was an error whatever happens in that error is kind of inside of a function so you got that function environment thing so it doesn't come out um, and so that's probably good but also confusing at times yeah like like you see like the try catch yeah. It's a function wrapped an expression. So if you just just the syntax of it, it's try catch open parentheses, yeah. And then like depending, you either have like this first argument error, then you open an expression, then you close it to have like a new argument, and then you run into uh, like the syntax is not that simple, no. Uh, and then like and we need to and it's for example, what? It's, to me it's it's reverse from what I would think. I would think, oh, here, try catch, run this code, and if it doesn't work, then do this. That's how I would think of it. So I would actually flip those arguments. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, that's. Uh, I would yeah, at, least, at least so the final to be clear. Yeah. So we have, so try, so basically, it's, try catch says, try this. If there's an error, do this function, do this other thing. If there's not an error, continue on doing what you're doing. And then regardless yep. of whether there's an error or not, run the final, whatever finally says to do, right? So that's kind that, of the three pieces. Yeah, That's my understanding. Yeah. And every step is wrapped as an expression. Even finally is an expression. I don't think it has to be. Um, yeah. 
It's just if it's multiple lines. Yeah, it yeah. can be. That's why you you make it an expression. If yeah. if you're if you're used to doing like um a lot of test that stuff or shiny code, I feel like you get used to that syntax a bit more. Um, but it's yeah, <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Can I share with you like uh because I. Yes. I have that small uh, snippet in, in in my code. I use the snake make for my for my uh, pipelines. So I, I don't remember how I'll come up with with this, but like the the try catch allows you to set a value uh, to an object. So I well, it's not it's not gonna run because that because like you you need you need that. But I'm using it here to read a file. And, and get one of the one of the one of the columns and if the file doesn't exceed because i didn't set any like filter mm -hmm. five five for, for filter then it just like my filter is is null and so so yeah i, I don't know if that's if that's a correct use for the try cut because i didn't see it in the in the in the book but just, yeah, like I think it's useful to to set a value. Uh, I think I think they have actually examples that are similar to this. The only thing I okay. would do is use message instead of print. Yes, and I don't think you need to return null. I don't. Um, but um, I, I I don't I, I don't think it's wrong. I just don't know that it's necessary. Um, but yeah, I would use message because it's a message. Okay. Yes. And, uh, okay. Yeah. I would but, also use the fact that it's an expression and unplug the room pipe. Uh, uh, like I think I will I will write a function for that. Having like uh, it's I found very hard to read like a, we are gonna come a function from room with snake param. I assume is a parameter from snake make, and yeah. then I'm gonna filter that uh, by cleaning and then pulling that. I think I will write a function. I I'll, think I would I'll use, say I'll use an expression. I'll use an expression. Uh, the full fact that it's an expression to make it more readable. But if it works for you and it does like you know the job, what's wrong with it? <laughs> I feel like if you use it just once, I would write it out because. Or I, I one thing uh, Mayel does, which I think is really cool. Um, she suggests rewriting even like functions that exist. You just put a wrapper around it to give it a new name. Um, so that the function name is exactly what it does. Like you could almost oh, write this as a function, which is like check for ID column. Okay. And, and that kind of thing, or, or return ID, get ID column or something, right? Something that is very explicit. Um, I'm kind of lazy though. If I use it once and it's like, I like to yeah. have it there so you can read it immediately and see, oh, that's what it's doing. But right. trade-offs, I think it's all, style and also who else is reading it with you <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank uh, you Di Diane, do you do you not need to put this error on top and put this like mm -hmm. this, this i think it's just named because it's a named argument yeah oh, okay because in the book it seems like error has to come first i like it better this way personally but yeah i know it's it's different from the book yeah yeah, this I think is much more intuitive. I think try, yeah, I agree. Think, more sense. try the try what you're trying to try first, and if it works, mm -hmm. keep it. Yeah. Other yeah. if it doesn't, then you go down to the error. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of like if true, if false kind of thing. I think yeah. Joe mentioned that actually. It's about thinking about the if else in case one kind of argument uh, functions. Yeah, the the flow is yeah. not is not, not like simple. I feel, but yeah. <laughs> okay, we have. Five, five minutes. Um, how do we want to review the rest of it? <laughs> oh, well, the, uh, do we, do we just skip to the quiz answer? Yeah, I agree. I think this is like if we all of us can answer this quiz uh, question, uh, we good. Uh, okay. We good. Let me let me look at the or let me show you the oh, yeah, question. Yeah. All right, if you want to skip this question? Let's oh, yeah. answer, answer this question. Oh, that's what we do. We can um, what are the three most important types of conditions? Well, this one I think we 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 all get it. Yeah, error, 
<laughs> Error message and warning. Well, what what do you use in your error? This one also we we what function do you use them? More errors. Yeah. And what we... the main the main difference between try catch and with calling under? I have the main one, which is try catches for error with calling under is, is more for warning and message. But I probably miss some. <laughs> do do I miss? <laughs> oh, it's a main difference, but. So yes, for one, but do other exist difference? I think they are the same structure, same syntax, no? Like try catch will not run all the code if it runs into one of the things that you've mentioned. Yeah. I, you so, may have just said that and I was not paying attention, sorry. And then the with calling handlers will always complete. Um, and yes. I think the one thing that I thought was really interesting is also you can run try catch with error message or warning. It doesn't mean it has to be just with errors. And the same thing with the calling handlers. I think you can also run it with an error as well. Um, and it's just whether or not if it completes the code is kind of how I thought of it in the end. Yeah, you're correct. That was that's what I think. Yeah, that's how I think of it. And then, Olivia, what function do we use for errors again? Uh, the, the second one? The second question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, try. Okay. You try. I'll try. Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I use that all the both. time when I'm downloading file. Just look at my Yeah. Every single okay, side, uh, side effect, just put that try into it. Just the try, yeah. Just put the slap a try on it. <laughs> just um, bad. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever works. Um, why might you want to create a custom error object? Uh, I think we answer, answer that question at the beginning. It's like when you start why? building package and you want to handle specific kind of error in a in specific way. I think that's my answer. Like yeah, when you start identifying uh, when you have users that start making some kind of error. And you want to handle it in a specific way. This is where I sh I would want that, but I'm, I don't know. This is my answer. I don't know if the correct answer, by the way. I think it'd be, <laughs> like, I, they're they're talking about testing, and I can imagine that testing is way cleaner if you can. You don't always have to test for the message that you get, but like the kind of error you get. And I was thinking too. Um, sometimes, like I write packages that do like essentially just data manipulation, and dealing with other packages errors are kind of tricky because sometimes I'm like, I don't care about the and also warnings. I think other packages are really like there's some that are just noisy, and I don't care about those warnings. They're really they're just saying, oh, we don't like that you're doing this. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> you know, or, and so I I don't want to suppress all the warnings. I just want to suppress that one. But that I think is really should be a message, not a warning. So if they had classes on them, I, I could get a lot fancier, but what, that you, can actually, use the, yeah. you can use the class, the default class. Well, only the they did it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I get, yeah. I get what you're saying. So, I mean, that's actually not really a great use case scenario because if, you know, they're probably, I don't know. Yeah. No, I find, I find most packages, not most, just, some are overused warnings a lot. And I also hate cat. I absolutely can't stand cat and packages. It is so, that's another, if you're ever writing a package, like your own scripts, whatever, but if you're ever writing a package, don't use cat unless like specifically it's to print to the console for the output. That's the output of the function because it is in, almost impossible to capture yes. cat and, and not display it. It's doable, but it's so convoluted it's so annoying and sorry obviously Steffi has a big pet peeve about it <laughs> about the cli package I don't use too much of it no uh, I yeah I've heard of it but I and we even had an our open sci um co-working session on it but uh oh I missed that that one dang <laughs> yeah that was uh moo moo uh, or uh, organized that one it was the European time zone so it was pretty early oh. in the morning no, I think I use it. I was here and I think I use it sometimes. I think it's that's the one that's replaced crayon. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, so. probably. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I, I think I think we answered all of this. Yeah. And, and 
what I get from that chapter, oh. and I insist, is like you don't need to understand everything, but you need to be aware that some of that can be tricky, and you can reference to the chapters to investigate more. I think yeah. this is very important. Uh, while other chapters, I feel everything was important. This one, I feel like this part is more like I, I will need to. I don't need to have a full, complete understanding of it, but I know it's here. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a great summary of this chapter, Olivia. That's exactly what I will say. Uh, I will go into N.